going to convert our lyric sheet with our letters indicating our chords into um, sheet music. So you're going to need a notation software unless you want to do it by hand. If you do, um, all power to you. It's not how I work. Um, so there are a lot of different options, Sibelius, Finale, Dorico now, all that kind of stuff. If you're just starting out and you don't want to pay for something, MuseScore is actually meant to be really, really good. I haven't personally used it, but I've heard really good things that it's really starting to improve. So I'd recommend just downloading something like that and just giving it a go and just having a go. Whatever you choose, I'll just recommend sort of sticking with it because these things can be very fiddly and take a long time to learn how to use its full functionality. So once you invest time learning a software, that, that time and that learning is really, really valuable. So that's why I've just stuck with Sibelius because I've used it ever since I was in year nine. And so all of that accumulative knowledge, all those little Googles of how do I do this in Sibelius, it really sort of adds up. And the idea of starting all that from scratch is a little bit daunting. Um, so I'm going to flip my camera around Okay, so this is what my piece looks like in Sibelius. Now again, this isn't a Sibelius tutorial. It isn't a music notation software tutorial. Um, that's something that you can go research and look at other videos. But basically I just create a piano line um, and a vocal line. Here I've got an ensemble line as well, just because there are some background voices. But really, if you've just got your main melody up here and your piano down here, that will serve you pretty well. Now what I'm focusing on is inputting this melody into Sibelius. Now we've got the lyrics, we've got the tune in our head that we've recorded. The only thing that we don't have that is super important is the rhythm. And I'm assuming you know a little bit about music. These dots and the, the types and the little tails and the you know colour inside them and the dots, all of that dictates the rhythm. So how long each note is held for and ultimately what the phrase is going to sound like rhythmically. Um, and in terms of, you know, knowing how to notate a rhythm, it just honestly comes down to practice. And the more you do it, the better you get. Um, the most important thing I would say when uh, going to notate a rhythm is to just take note of the time signature. Now, my time signature here is in 4-4. Four, four. Again, I've said it before, I like to keep it nice and simple. 4-4 um, four, four is great for that. Um, sometimes I'll start notating something that I think might be in a regular time signature like 4-4 four, four, and it actually turns out to be in say 6-8 or something a little bit more complex. Um, but basically if you can just keep the steady beat it will usually be in a simple time signature um, and the beat is something that is really important. So because I'm in 4-4 four, four, I've got four beats in a bar and what we're going to do is we're just going to sing along the melody in our head but to the beat and so it goes like this mother tomorrow i turn nine so if you sing any of those notes on the beat it means you know where it goes a little bit so the first one is mother that goes right on the beat it's not mother it's mother so it's right on the beat so i know i'm going to be putting my first note right there now you usually have your little doobie doo here, which has got all of your rhythms. Um, and the way I knew it was a quaver and not a crotchet is again listening to that beat. If it was going to go for one whole beat, it would be mother, but it jumps off the the note before the next beat arrives, mother. So we know it is not a full crotchet. It is a quaver. So just through process of that, just going through and really tapping out the beat, going slowly, and trial and error as well. Um, the best thing about this program is that you can listen back. So I've got my transport selected here, and basically that allows you to play. Okay, so we'll go back to where we were um, here on our first phrase. you're looking for is for it to sound like the way you had it in your head when you press play. If it doesn't, that means it might need a little bit of tweaking. So let's say, for example, I put that first one as a crotchet, mother, and let's say I had this one as a crotchet as well, so it, the incorrect rhythm. Let's just have a listen and see what it sounds like. So it's pretty similar, but it's not quite what I wanted. So you can really play around with the rhythms here and um, get it exactly where you want it. So I'm going to go back to where we 
had it, which is there, I think. Mother, tomorrow I turn nine. Great. So it's basically following that same process again and again and again. You get to the next phrase. You have the lyrics in our lyric sheet. Uh, we have the tune in our head that's recorded. We just want to get this to match that. So when we play it back, it matches the tune that's in our head and the rhythm that's in our head. And we're just tapping out the beat. So here you can see all of the notes fall exactly on the beat because we've got four beats in a bar and you've got four crotchets in a bar. So all of these are going to be on the beat. And it's true because when we sing it back and we tap out the beat for full time, I'm a swine, but hear me out, there's just one thing. Um, so once you've got that melody line in, step one, tick, great. Now these blue letters, these are the letters that we had before that were in our lyric sheet from the previous video. So I've got them in there to just show you what we're doing. So we're going to turn that G into dots, okay? So sheet music. Now, if you don't play piano like myself, I just keep it super simple and do semi roofs. I might get a little bit more complex where I've just got them as um, crotchets um, if I want a bit of a bouncy vibe, you know. But really, I don't play piano. I'm just trying to get it in there super, super simple. So these are just held chords when they're semi roofs. We start off with the G. We just stack the third one on top and the fifth one on top of that. I put in a nice little bass note. Bing, bada, boom. Done. It's a G. Do the same thing for the C, the D, you know, and getting these placed in the right section, again, just listen back. And that is the absolute blessing of notation software. So this just allows you to get instant feedback, which is the most valuable thing. So just going all the way through the song, doing it for the whole song, we've just got our melody line adding in the chords in sheet music format, nothing fancy. Um, and once you've got that, the whole song, you are ready for the next step. Um, along the way, you might have some parts where things have to change from your original um, sing-through or what you were originally making up. That is A-OK. -okay. Once you've got this product, um, it is much more helpful for other people who you might be wanting to collaborate with. Okay, that was a very brief rundown of how I turn the... Um chart with the lyrics and the chord letters into sheet music. Um, hopefully it was still helpful. I just really want to finish this off and um, get it out of the way so I can finish this project. Um, in the next part we're going to be talking about how to turn the sheet music that you've created into an arrangement, something that sounds good, something that you can actually use. So come back for that.